Welcome to our lecture online. A very fundamental concept here is the force of gravity due to a hollow sphere. And here's the approach on how to do that. So we have a small mass, big M, and the mass of the hollow sphere is small M. And I know that it seems odd that you may want to have it reversed, but don't worry about it. We just have it laid out like that. And in order to calculate the force of gravity between this sphere, this hollow sphere, and this mass right here, we're going to put a little band around the sphere, and we're going to calculate, first of all, the circumference of that band, and then the area of the band, realizing that the thickness of the band can be defined by R d phi, the angle right here, that will be the thickness of the band, and so this is the area of that band. And then to find the mass of the band, we take the mass of the whole sphere and multiply times the ratio of the area of the band divided by the area of the whole sphere. So once you do that, you have an equation for the mass of that band. And now we want to find the force of gravity on this little mass right here called big M. And we do that because we calculate the force of gravity between the band and the big M. And so that can be found by simply taking, oh, and then of course, we don't want this force right here, we want the horizontal force because the vertical force cancels out as we integrate around the whole band. So we just want d of x, which is equal to df times the cosine of the angle. And so that's what we have over here. d of x is then going to be the typical equation, g times the product of the masses divided by the distance squared, which of course is going to be s squared times the cosine of the angle. And then if we plug in what dm is equal to, which we have right here, we end up with this equation. Then we use the law of, of cosines to have an expression for the cosine of theta and the sine of phi, because otherwise we can't solve the problem. So we have to express the cosine of theta and the sine of phi in terms of s, little r, and big R. And we do that, first of all, by using the law of cosine on the cosine of theta to find the cosine of theta and to find the cosine of phi. And then by taking the derivative of that, we end up getting the sine of phi. Now we have an expression for the sine of phi, an expression for the cosine of phi. Then we plug that into our original equation. The derivative of f of x equal to this. We now substitute for sine of phi and the cosine of theta, and we end up with this equation right here. Then when we integrate that, we get the force of gravity at this point right there. We call it f of x, that's what we want. And that means we have a constant times the integral of this expression times the s. So when we take this and algebraically simplify it, we get this. And the limits will be from little r minus r, that's this point right here, to little r plus big R, that's this point over here. So we integrate over the whole sphere. Those are the limits of integration. And then notice we have a constant part and we have this integration. And this integration ends up being equal to one. Now, you don't have to believe me. I will show you in the next video why this is equal to one, but assume at this point it will be. So if this is equal to one, this goes away. We end up with this, which simply means that the force of gravity equals g times the product of the two masses divided by the distance between the center mass of the two objects squared. Just like what we expected, the force of gravity due to a hollow sphere is equal to the force of gravity as if all that mass was concentrated at the center mass of the sphere. And then you can imagine if you want to take a solid sphere that you can then simply add up all the little spheres all the way out and in each case for every one of the little spheres as you go away from inside to outside if you want to integrate over all the little spheres, hollow spheres that make up the solid sphere you then realize that it is as if all the mass is concentrated at the center for each little hollow sphere that makes up the total sphere. And so you will end up with the very same equation for the force of gravity as a solid sphere as you would for a hollow sphere. And that's why we start with the hollow sphere, because it's easy to integrate, which shows you that the force of gravity outside a spherical object is as if all the mass of the spherical object is concentrated at the center of mass. And this is how it's done.